In this episode, Volkswagen jumps on the autonomous factory bandwagon, Elon Musk names the city on Mars, and DARPA gets a new spy drone. Let's get it. UBTech, a Chinese robotics company that makes Walker S humanoid, is now working with Volkswagen. Unlike Chinese car makers that want to use robots in production, UBTech and FA Volkswagen will join forces to build an innovative car factory that will be fully operated by humanoids. Group statement says the companies will work together to develop highly intelligent and flexible production lines as well as a fully autonomous car factory. The location chosen for the pilot plant is Qingdao, eastern China. Some of the tasks that robots are going to be a part of are tightening bolts, assembling components, and moving car parts. Not particularly inspiring, but the factory control mentioned in the official announcement sounds way cooler. Let's see what happens in practice, but in theory, the first stage will be to adapt and improve the robots for Volkswagen's production lines. What do you guys think of more robots in factories? Yay or nay? Who is the leader in robotics today? It's hard to tell, but many are banking right now. Sanctuary AI, for example, has just attracted another round of investment, capping funding at $140 million, which in light of its know-how, sounds little for some reason. While other humanoid robot developers focus on bipedal movement, Sanctuary AI is working on embedded artificial intelligence and improving coordination of hands, fingers, and eyes. Functions such as perception and task planning are also being prioritized to allow the Phoenix robot to interact with the world around it. Sanctuary AI sees its mission as nothing less than creating the world's first humanoid intelligence for universal robots. And the company is making quite some progress. Today, Phoenix can learn new tasks in less than 24 hours. But as long as training is required for each task, it's too early to declare a breakthrough or bring robots closer to human intelligence. Still though, 24 hours to learn something new is pretty impressive. On to China now. The country hosted the World Conference on Artificial Intelligence recently. As always, we got our eyes on the prize. So check out our review of the event in our next video. So be sure to subscribe to catch it. It seems that the PRC does not rest at all. China Association for Science and Technology has recently published a list of 30 vital areas to the country. These include areas such as artificial intelligence, new energy, high-tech equipment, and life sciences. Key topics include research on digital humans and emotionally intelligent robots, assessment of accuracy for equipment preservation factories, and green manufacturing of drugs and functional materials using precision chemistry. The list also includes low-cost production of mild steel using clean energy. Stay tuned for more news, and if you happen to be a business-minded person, this is your chance to know where the demand is going to come from. Talking about business, Tesla wants to make its unmanned cars self-cleaning. You're thinking windshield and body, but the cleaning actually happens inside, like an oven. The company has applied for a patent for an automated sanitizing system for its future robo-taxis. It will use image, sound, heat, pressure, and other sensors to monitor conditions inside the car and sanitize the interior using one of the two methods. The first involves using an ultraviolet light system installed in the cabin as well as a heating system. And the second one involves the creation of areas equipped with robots for sanitizing, all to completely exclude humans from maintenance. True, first Tesla will have to create and put into production the robot cars themselves. Musk promises to solve the problem of unmanned driving, but how many times have his deadlines suddenly sprung to life and moved? More on Musk, NASA will decommission the International Space Station and SpaceX has been chosen to put the nail in the coffin. $850 million will go to SpaceX to develop a vehicle that will take the ISS worth $150 billion from orbit into the atmosphere, where it should burn at a temperature of 3000 Fahrenheit or 1650 centigrade. If any large parts or debris reach the ground, they should safely land in the Pacific Ocean. And that's all fine and well, however, building the machine to get things done is quite a feat since the ISS weighs almost 420 tons and is nearly 360 feet or 110 meters long. 
Anyone got any clues as to how this entire operation should be performed? At the same time, Musk has named his future city on Mars. The discussion about it unfolded on social network X and the SpaceX founder could not walk past the opportunity. And if users approached the task seriously and offered such options as Ares, Elon's Great City, New York, Mersopolis, Elantra, Elonopolis, Elonia, and Elonstone, Musk himself approached the task with humor and proposed to call it simply Bar. Get it? Mars Bar. A bit of military news for you now, folks. The U.S. Air Force has declassified its new Ultra Spy Plane, publishing a number of photos of it. The development is designed to fully or partially replace the MQ-9 Reaper, which is used, among other things, to protect U.S. vessels. The current turmoil in the Middle East has revealed an unpleasant detail about the almost legendary drone. At a cost of $30 million, the MQ-9 Reaper has proven to be quite vulnerable. It seems that Ultra is designed to eliminate the shortcoming of long-range reconnaissance drones. The new product is developed by Design Technologies Incorporated. It's said to be inexpensive by military standards, but the cost is undisclosed. What is known is that Ultra, developed on the basis of an existing model of sports aircraft, is capable of taking off quickly, staying in the air for up to 80 hours, and carrying a payload of up to 400 pounds or 180 kilos. It's expected to carry all sorts of sensors and information gathering instruments. Ultra's top altitude is lower than that of the MQ-9, but specifics have not been disclosed. Judging by the photo, Ultra is already deployed or will be really soon, even though the Pentagon's quiet about it like a cat got their tongue. The U.S. Air Force at this point is almost bragging because they have also revealed details about the first flight of its newest drone, the XQ-67A. It's a fully autonomous aircraft that is expected to become, quote, faster and more maneuverable with less endurance but longer range. The new drones will accompany manned combat aircraft as a disposable reconnaissance and power platform. They'll form the basis of an entire family of drones, accelerating their development and deployment. So far, the XQ-67A has only been tested for safety and flight performance, with the drone being controlled remotely by humans. So it's still a long way away from performing autonomous missions. But... DARPA plans to test its next-generation X-Plane drone this year already. The apparatus is designed in a flying wing pattern and has been developed as part of the Ceres Hybrid Electric Propulsion Aircraft Demonstration Program, Shepard, for short. The long-range drone is equipped with hybrid electric propulsion system. Its main advantages, along with its range, are its high stealth and large payload capacity. The combination of characteristics suggests that the X-Plane will be used primarily in enemy territory. As for specific characteristics, the weight of the drone is close to 1250 pounds or 570 kilos, with a maximum speed of about 285 miles or 460 kilometers per hour. It's also known that the X-Plane's electric motors are located inside the fuselage. It's expected that the device will be put into operation within the next 20 months or so. There's more, but we're out of time, folks, so subscribe to the channel, like this and other videos, and check out our Instagram for more news from the world of high-tech.